So today we're going to have a look at uh, bond energy calculations. Uh, by way of an introduction, it's worth us thinking about uh, a straightforward um, reaction before we actually have a look at doing the calculations. So a straightforward reaction um, is the reaction between a hydrogen molecule and a chlorine molecule to make two hydrogen chloride molecules. Now, if we were to write these out, um, in, uh, draw these out in terms of their bonds, we would see that we've got a hydrogen uh, atom bonded to a hydrogen atom. So this line here represents a covalent bond and then chlorine bonded to a chlorine here. And that goes to make two HCl molecules. So in each case, we've got a hydrogen bonded to a chlorine. So what's happened in this reaction is that the bonds here, the uh, hydrogen to hydrogen bond and the chlorine to chlorine bond has been broken. And we've made two new bonds. Um, in this case, two bonds between uh, hydrogen and chlorine. Um, so any chemical reaction involves the bond breaking step. And that's going to need energy. So we're going to have an energy input in order to do that. OK, there's um, a, uh, an attraction, um, a covalent bond holding these two atoms together. That has to be broken in order for um, the reaction to take place. So we've got an energy input. Uh, in chemistry, we call that the endothermic step. And then we have a bond breaking step, sorry, bond making step. Um, and it's a little bit harder to understand why uh, this is an energy output. Uh, we'll go into that in future lessons, but because we're only really interested in the calculations today. So it's um, we're just going to accept that this is an energy output. Um, the word making tends to imply an energy input in the way we use it. But at, at, at the quantum level that we're dealing with here, um, it is an energy output. Um, and we say that's exothermic. So um, we can use this understanding to actually have a go at uh, some calculations. So here's my example. Uh, and in my example, uh, we've got um, the equation for a chemical reaction here. Uh, and we've also got the uh, bonds drawn out for us here. So before we actually start the calculation, um, I'm just going to uh, focus that for a moment. I'm just going to uh, get us to think about how um, what this means and, and draw it out a little bit fuller than perhaps it's given to us here. So don't forget, here's the equation and here's the bonds drawn out. Don't worry about the table for now. So if I just draw this out again here, then we can see that this is a methane molecule and um, that methane molecule is made up of a carbon atom and that carbon atom is covalently bonded to four hydrogen atoms. But then we've got two O2, two oxygen molecules here. So we've got that two in front of uh, the oxygen to oxygen uh, molecule here. So I'm just going to draw this out um, fully. So right, I've replaced the two there by just drawing two um, O2 molecules out here. Sorry. Um, and then we've got our carbon dioxide molecule, and then we've got two water molecules. So we've got a two there, and we've got two H2Os here. So I'm going to draw this one out fully again, like this. Just makes it a little bit easier for us to understand what's going on. So having done that, we can then think about doing the calculation. So we're going to look at all the bonds that have been broken in the reactants. So everything on the left hand side of the reaction arrow. Notice I've just drawn a little squiggly line here um, to keep them separate. So what's happened here? We've got one, two, three, four carbon to hydrogen bonds. So four times carbon to hydrogen bonds. And we've got two oxygen to oxygen double bonds like that. So if we have a look at the table of data here, we're told that the energy uh, in a carbon to hydrogen bond is 413 kilojoules per mole. Don't worry too much about the units at the moment. Uh, we don't need to understand that. We, for, for now, we just need to be able to do the calculation. So that will be 4 times 413. 
which means the total amount of energy needed to break four carbon to hydrogen bonds is 1652. Um, and we can do the similar thing for the oxygen. So oxygen to oxygen double bond has a bond energy of 498. So two times 498 uh, gives us 996. That means the total energy to break all of these bonds, the four carbon to hydrogens and the two oxygen to oxygen double bonds is 2,648 kilojoules per mole. Let's do the same thing for the products. So we've got a carbon to oxygen double bond here and a carbon to oxygen double bond here. So two times C uh, double bond O's. And then up here we've got one, two, three, four oxygen to hydrogen bonds. Um, and these are the pieces of data given to us here. So two times 805 uh, for the carbon to oxygen double bonds is 1610 and then 4 times 464 is 1856 which means that the total energy released making this uh, making these bonds is 3466 now once we've done that so this is our bond breaking uh, in the reactants and this is our bond making in the product Oh, we can do a calculation to calculate the energy change for the reaction. Um, and that's going to be the energy um, needed to break the bonds in the reactants. And we subtract from that the energy released making the bonds, which gives us minus... Uh, 818 kilojoules per mole. Now at GCSE, it actually doesn't make that much difference whether or not we put a plus or minus. We could do this either way around and we'd still get the marks. Um, it's important though that we do recognize that it is a, a negative value. The reason it's a negative value is because this reaction is exothermic overall. How do we know that? Well, if we look at the energy released making bonds, that's greater than the energy used breaking bonds. So the making part, this is the exothermic part, making bonds, is greater than the breaking bonds. But the real purpose of what we're trying to do today is for us to be able to do one of these calculations. Thank you very much.